When route redistribution is working, my friends, as we've seen and hopefully will continue to see, it is a beautiful thing. And when it's not working correctly, it could be a major pain in some obvious ways when we're not getting some routes or when we don't have some connectivity. But there are also some less than obvious ways route redistribution can go wrong on us. Now, routing loops, of course, are horrendous, very, very bad. But suboptimal routing is also, well, suboptimal. It's not as optimal as it should be, which means it's bad. Now, with suboptimal routing, packets eventually get where they're supposed to go, but they're not getting there as efficiently as they should, as in this particular example. We're going to walk through this one, and then I've got a great big lab uh, to illustrate the concept as well. Uh, just a quick reminder for your exam and for production networks, only the important servers have giant money bags next to them. Now, there are two valid paths R2 can use to get packets to that server. It could go one, four, three, and then three sends the packets over to the server, or just straight to one and straight to three and then to the server. Now, as we know, the physically shortest path is not necessarily the logically shortest path, but for this discussion, we're gonna assume that it is and that all links are at the same speed. Now, in the case of suboptimal routing, router two would end up using the longer paths. Uh, the packets would still get to the server, but not as quickly as they should, not as efficiently. And of course, using the longer path would put an unnecessary strain on router four as well, because it ends up handling packets it shouldn't be handling. That's kind of the hidden cost of suboptimal routing. Now, packets that enter a routing loop have a much rougher time of it, as do you and I, the network admins. Because packets in a routing loop will be sent back and forth the same group of routers over and over and over without ever reaching their destination. And pings don't really do much for us as far as spotting a routing loop because they just give you, you know, you can get there or you can't get there. There are other symbols, but let's face it, with a ping we usually get either periods, timeouts, of course, or exclamation points. Uh, Traceroute is a great tool to use because if you see something like this, you know, if you see the same IP addresses over and over within a traceroute, you, my friend, have a routing loop on your hands. And what I did here was trace a path to 4444 in another lab. And you can see we keep going from 1231 to 1233, then the next packet to 1233, 1231, and then 13, and so forth. So when you see the same numbers keep coming up and around and around and around, uh, then you've got a real problem. That's an indicator of a routing loop. Now, we're going to work with re redistribution and adjusting administrative distances on top of looking for some, op some suboptimal routing. And you can see we've got quite the network here. First off, over routers 1, 2, and 3, we have the usual 172.12.123.0.24 network. That is a RIP version 2 domain. Uh, router 1 also has a loopback, 10.1.1.1, that it may want to redistribute into OSPF. That is our objective. Routers 2, 3, 4, and 5 all have eth uh, excuse me, fast Ethernet or gig Ethernet interfaces in OSPF area 0. Now, the ASBR in this lab is going to be router 3. We're not going to perform the redistribution on 2 and 3, just on 3. Now, the first step, make life easy on yourself. The first step is always to make sure that the ASBR to be has the route to be redistributed. And we'll bring the equipment up now. I've gone ahead and done the basic configs. And you can see here's router 3, 10110, rip route. And also, I want to show you that router 2 does indeed have the exact same route, 10110 via 123.1. So it's the exact same route, but we're going to do the redistribution on router 3. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do mutual redistribution, as a matter of fact. We're going to do two-way route redistribution because I also want router 1 to see the 3110-24 network. So let's bring the equipment back up. First, we will redistribute into OSPF. And we're going to do a redistribute RIP subnets and redistribute connected subnets. And let's go with that one first. We'll come back and do the RIP redistribution in a moment. Let's go downstream to router 4. And you can see already there are the, both of the routes, one connected and one uh, the RIP route, 10110 24. 
And as we expect, they both have the seed metric of 20 and they also have a code of OE2. So let's go back to router three and finish the two-way route redistribution. And for that one, we need router rip and we're gonna redistribute just the connected subnet, which is 30, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, metric two. And that's it. So let's go up to router one and go to C and what we can see. And there's the route 3110 already, and it's a rip route. And so, so far, so good. Now let's go back to four and five for a moment here. Now, what should we do now? And don't say take a nap or something like that. We can do that afterwards. Show IP route OSPF would work better. So you just need to thinking about taking a nap. Took my attention off what we were doing. Okay, what we need to do, of course, is ping a couple of interfaces here. And we need to ping 10, let's just go for the furthest interface up there on router 1, 10, 1, 1, 1. No problem. And we'll go with 5. And no problem there. So things are looking pretty good. Uh, what I like to do in a scenario like this, though, when I've performed route redistribution, I mentioned something earlier about multiple entrance and or exit points to domains. So whenever I do something at one ASBR, I like to look at the other border router, even though we didn't do route redistribution on router two, I like to check that out and see what's going on. So let's just make sure everything's kosher over on two. And our route's gone. I don't think it will show. I think I've already gone too far. Nope, there it is. At the very beginning of the lab, I ran show IP route rip, and I saw the loop back up on router 1, 10, 1, 1, 0. So where did it go? Why am I not seeing it now? Hmm. Well, we are running another protocol on, on here. We're running OSPF. And there it is. So it's marked as an OE2 route. Uh, boy, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Well, I gave you a hint in the title of this one, Administrative Distance. Let's go back through the lab stuff here. And here's the situation. Router 2 still sees the route. And it can still ping. Let's go ahead and ping up there. Whoop. Extra period there. So it pings it with no problem at all. But here's the issue. Router 2 has it as an OSPF route where it had it as RIP before we started. And the change is admin distance because now the way our network is set up, Router 2 is hearing about the 10110 route from two different sources. Router 1 is advertising it over RIP, but 3 is also advertising it via OSPF. And since the prefix length is exactly the same in both advertisements, that's where administrative distance comes in. And if the prefix length is exactly the same, which it is, the OSPF route is going to be preferred over the RIP route because the OSPF AD is 110 and RIP is 120. So before redistribution, as you can see on the board with show IP route RIP at the top, that's before redistribution. Packets going from router 2 to 10.1.1.0, excuse me, 10.1.1.0 slash 24, which just goes straight to router 1 because you can see the next hop is 172.12.123.3. But now the route is an OSPF route using 30.1.1.3 as the next hop. So now packets from router 2 have to go through the Ethernet segment before being sent across the RIP domain to router 1. You can see the next hop is 30.1.1.3. And trace route will show us the exact same thing. It's going to show us the next hop is 3113 and then up to 172.12.123.1. So again, while this is not a disaster, it is suboptimal routing. And you can see, of course, the larger your network is, the bigger a problem this would get to be. So changing the admin distance just might help us out here. And we're going to see how at the beginning of the very next video.